got a great guest for you guys. Very interesting. Greg Palas is in the house. First of hey, all, welcome. Ma'am. How are you? Okay. For those of you who don't know, he's a New York Times bestselling author of Our Madhouse, The Best Democracy Money Can Buy. And he's got a new book out, Vultures Picnic, okay? Uh, in the pursuit of petroleum pigs, power pirates, and high finance carnivores. I want to ask you about the pigs and the vultures in a second. So uh, first, uh, t- tell me about what the unifying theme of this book is. This is the 1%, man. I'm investigating them. Uh, actually, uh, Rick Perry called me last night and asked me to change it from Vulture's Picnic to Job Creator's Picnic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're small business owners, please. Right, right, they're, yeah, they're the, the job, job creators. creators. Okay, right. so I want to find out who these guys are. I mean, instead of saying, oh, British Petroleum or Goldman Sachs, I want you to meet them, go meet their trophy, high, uh, trophy wives, uh, trophy lives. Um, you know, we follow their yachts and we go find the bones and bodies that got them their billions all over the world. So I do old fashioned investigative undercover reporting for BBC TV and that's what you're gonna see in here. I go from the Arctic to Asia, I get busted there. So what are you doing in the Arctic? What are you doing in the middle of Asia? What what happened? Okay, I'll tell you why I'm in Asia. Okay, deep water rise and explodes, boom, right? And oh, it's an accident, green BP, how could that happen? I get a cable. Uh, from a ship floating in the Caspian Sea off the coast of Azerbaijan. If you don't know where Azerbaijan is, don't worry. When the 82nd Airborne arrives, that's how you're going to learn where it is. Now, yeah. Uh, by the way, it's uh, next to Uzbeki Beki Bekistan, <laughs> right. as Herman Kinn would say. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Okay, it's a little oil kingdom, what I call the Islamic Republic of BP, right? And I get this message: This has happened before. Cannot speak to you on this system. So. I have BBC says, get on a plane. So I work my way into, a, into this strange kingdom and find out, sure enough, uh, that there was another explosion, another blowout, exactly like the Deepwater Horizon, two years earlier, mm-hmm. okay? And BP covered it up. Now, how do you cover up a blowout like that? Okay. Bribes, beatings, babes. And I get, so, and in the middle of this, I'm getting, trying to get the evidence out of this place, and I get busted. I'm going across the desert, like, you know, Ended up badly. I got busted just like, well, Rommel had a bad time in the desert, too. But I, um, I get busted by the secret police. Of and, Azerbaijan? Of Azerbaijan. And, they, and, and the BP police had their own uh, police force with little oil derricks on it. No. Yeah. They, they do in Azerbaijan. Yeah. Was, did the blowout happen in Azerbaijan? Yeah. yeah, right off the coast, deep water. Same uh-huh. thing. Same BP rig, Transocean, same crap cement that caused the, first, this, the second explosion in the Gulf. They covered it all up. Now, they took my film, of course. Uh-huh. They took my film. Well, but they didn't take my, can- my pen, you know, that I was making notes. Of course, it was one of those little Austin Power pens. Oh, that's awesome. That we do a little, uh-huh. you know. Uh-huh. And, and, and getting that out was not so easy because when I put it in my briefcase in the, in the x-ray machine, it kind of looked like a gun silencer or a dildo or something. And uh-huh. I had a bit of a problem. Uh, that's a but bit I got of a problem it out. either way, yeah. But I got it out, and we got the evidence. And listen, BP, Lord Brown, his president in, in the USA testified under oath to Congress that there was never a problem with their deep water drilling. This is in November 2009, six months later, deep water horizon blows up. They had covered up the fact that the methods they were using were deadly. They, right. And so, Greg, uh, when, you, uh, when you find that out, is it your conclusion that they think, hey, listen, we know this happened before, we know the problem with it, but we're going to continue, not because they want another blowout, of course they don't want another blowout, it's going to cost them money, but they continue uh, their operations it's cheap. as is, because it's, cheap. it's cheaper than trying look, to fix look, you it. You know what it is? It's really dumb. They, and, use, and, they use quick set cement. Time uh, is money on these ships, right? Uh-huh. So. You know, time is money, time is money, time is money. So we gotta use the quick set cement. It just doesn't work. So they thought, oh, well that was one time, don't worry about it, that's a zero by John. And the lesson that they learned was, look, if you buy off the government, then you can cover it up, right? So in Azerbaijan, that apparently worked fairly well, in the U.S., it didn't obviously it didn't work nearly as well, but at the same time, you know, a lot of times you had the Obama administration appearing to be like the PR people. A of, DC of scam. BP. Oh yeah, like like for example, I go in. Uh, they're told the Obama administration BP says bugs, bacteria have eaten all the oil. So I go to the Gulf Coast and I get a submarine to find mm. out that the oil's still in there in the water column. Yeah, of course, and, and it's so, in the water, of course. And so, of course. No, but you know, and, and so but, here's what I yeah. think people have to understand. Why does the government of the United States and Azerbaijan do the same thing? It's because of the money, Lebowski, right? Yeah. And so obviously the leaders of Azerbaijan, I would assume, get rich off of it, right? 
but our guys get the campaign contributions, et cetera. Exactly. And so what's happening, it's a poison system. It's oil poisoning and money poisoning, too. So, for example, um, the, the other thing that, that I was looking at, I go up to the Arctic, for example, and I, I get a message to go up to meet the Eskimo leader, Etok, the great whale hunter. Mm -hmm. And he's got yeah, information awesome, for me. Yeah. yeah, I get some information from him. And I have to sit inside a whale and eat whale meat. So I have to be polite. By you the way, literally sat inside a whale. Inside a whale, eating fermented whale meat and congealed blood, which, by the way, tastes like whale meat and congealed blood. And we, um, but then I get information that, you know, you got this XL pipeline that's running down uh -huh. uh, from Canada to Houston. They say it's safe. That's because the only way they know it's safe is they run a, a pig through it. N not a uh, not a uh, oil company executive. I'm talking about a robot pig that has oh. little whiskers and when there's a leak or there's a you know corrosion or something it's going to explode it squeals well i find out that they've jacked the software like you know turn it down like pulling the batteries out of your smoke detector so it doesn't right. go off so it doesn't squeal no problem so i get <laughs> so i get a guy who says i know that the software has been fixed i said how do you know that he said i fixed it he confessed and i said and i said we go on camera no uh-huh but then, that's in the book. But then, yeah, but then, in California, pipeline bro blows up. Nine people get incinerated, including a 13-year-old kid, and he comes to me. He still won't go on camera, but I'm in shadow, and I'm getting his information, corroborating the information, and I go to the oil companies, I go to BP. I said, was there a blowout in the Caspian? Did you jack with the pigs and silence the, the, the pigs, the pig robots? People are blowing up. Right. They said, the answer was, no denial. We follow the law. Right, especially when they fix the law, <laughs> so that the it's law is their law. Right. It's their it's, law. It's like it's like coke industries. They, oh, similar pipeline explosion. They're in there too. K kids die, etc. And then and they say we follow regulation. Well, that's because we bought the politicians who helped us to fix the regulation, so we wouldn't have problems. And that's but that's the one percenter. See, it's not when we talk about occupying. We're talking about the one percent, right? Or this is really the one percent, the one percent, the one percent that I'm that I'm investigating. And that's what the vultures picnic, the main vultures picnic, when you talk about buying elections, do you know who the number one donor is to the Republican Party now? People finally heard the word Koch brothers. The number one guy is a guy named Paul Singer, or otherwise known as Paul the Vulture Singer, okay? Right, he Hedge makes, fund guy. Yeah, he makes his money. To, by the way, today uh, his people called up and threatened BBC television. They said, we have a file on Greg Palast. Just thought I'd tell you that. Yeah, I gotta, okay, great. They, just call. We have a file on Greg Palace. I got a file on you too, um, <laughs> and, and we're gonna put it out. So this guy, okay, he's the big donor. He makes his money by um, squeezing the poorest nations in the world. He finds some old debt that they've forgotten about. We pay off their debts. We wipe out their debts. George Bush made a big deal. He wiped out all the debts of African nations. So his cronies, his biggest donors, could go in and take the resources of the Congo. I was just there. So this is in the book, how so they get So I want it. to talk about that for a second. Yeah. And, and by the way, Paul Singer, uh, his money controls so much of what happens, including one issue that he actually was on our side on, on uh, gay marriage in New York. Yeah. His, I believe his son is Because gay. his son, his son wanted to marry, and you know what, what's a shame? Is that if his son only wanted to marry a poor Congolese kid, he <laughs> wouldn't be destroying the Congo. I just came there, they had a cholera epidemic. Okay, yeah. you have to understand what this guy does. The Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations calls the singer, the number one donor of the Republican Party, right? This uh -huh. is, he doesn't call him a job creator. He says, his job is killing babies. That's a quote. Wow, okay. okay? So tell us why, why is he, because that's a heavy charge, right? Mm -hmm. So what does he do in, in these African countries that you think hurts those countries so much, and how does he profit off of it? Okay, what he does is, they grab the vulture, I'm going to talk about the whole gaggle of vultures of which Singer right. is the uber vulture, okay? And yeah. they're, all, they're all together and they all support, the, they all combine to support the GOP right. normally. But they mm -hmm. got, they buy the Republican Party, they rent some Democrats when they need it. Right. And what they do is when countries are being destroyed by civil war like Bosnia and uh, Congo, they find some old debts of the country. The countries get restored to democracy. The West, we, the taxpayers, generously write off all their debts. And they say, wait, wait, I got this piece of paper. They like international repo men. Mm -hmm. And here, I want to collect. And they pay maybe, you know, two cents on the dollar on these debts. And they collect 20. So like Singer in Congo, he paid $10 million for debt. With, as our information, he's collecting a half a billion dollars. Where do they get that money? It's our money. It's our aid money. John Conyers, when he heard one of my reports in Vulture's Picnic, went into George Bush's office, right, right into the Oval Office and said, 
Did you know that our aid money is being stolen by your big donors? <laughs> yeah. And Bush, you know what Bush said? I, I didn't know nothing about it, right. which is what he says a lot. About. Right. But you have to understand the way that they do it. They're not just cruel investors. It doesn't work that way. It's bribery. It's inside info. So I want the audience to understand, look, it's one thing that, you know, you make a bet on Apple or GM in the stock market, and it turns out you're right, you make money, that's life, that's great, there's no, nothing wrong with that. But in this case, you know, when they, they go to buy the, ch the cheap debt, because they know we're going to pay it off. Right, so that's why they go and they go. Oh, I know you got this. You can't collect on this hundred million dollars or whatever it is. I'll pay you two million for it, and because no, they know that they got our politicians in their back pocket. But right? see, here's here's the thing. I hate to say it. There's a lot of people that would do that. Mm -hmm. Spend two cents to get ten dollars. Right. Right. But here's what they do. It doesn't work that easy. In the case of, for example, Zambia. One of the vultures I start out in Vultures Picnic Tracking is a guy named Goldfinger. It's the real Goldfinger. Now, the real Goldfinger, by the way, makes the, the James Bond Goldfinger look like a Girl Scout. Uh -huh. And we trace this guy. He's paid off the president of Zambia to shaft his own country. Mm -hmm. okay? We follow the president of Zambia. When I say we, me and my, uh, and my sidekick, Miss Bad Penny, and that's, by the way, her real name. So we have real Goldfinger, real Bad Penny. That sounds unbelievable. It, it is, but it's true. And uh, Bad Penny follows him to Geneva. She speaks four languages so she can handle this. And he stops when he's about to dump his uh, cash in a Swiss bank account. He stops to go shopping, as you and I would on the bank, and go on our way to the bank. He shops go, stops to go shopping. But he buys, spends a million dollars cash Buys 200 pairs of elevator shoes, because he's a short dictator. And he gets a diamond-studded tie. It's like all diamonds. It's maybe a tie-studded diamond or something. And this, she's filming because she is it, speaking the, the in French. Pen. Does she have the pen? No, no, she the has, secret she's pretending, because she looks mm -hmm. like a Bond girl. She looks like a yeah. movie star. She's, she's filming a, a reality show called, you know, Shopping with the Rich and Famous. And she's getting this all down. Right. Okay? And, and you this, know what's, this what is amazes how we get me the is that, the, uh, that some of these leaders of the countries sell out mm -hmm. their, you know, their own people, you know, with the incredible outbreak of disease in some of these countries. They need the money so desperately, but they make a secret deal with these guys in New York, and then for what? For a diamond-studded tie? For a tacky, well, horrible tie? You know what? There's a really important story in there that'll that'll explain it all. This. There are trucks stealing, skimming oil off the Osage Indian Reservation, Oklahoma. I was in an investigation. Remember, I was an investigator before I was an investigative reporter. We're following the trucks. They go back to a loading dock. Who's standing on the loading dock telling these truckers to skim oil off the in Osage Indian Reservation? A guy named Charles Koch. Charles <laughs> Koch personally is telling his truckers to steal oil. Now, here's the thing. They're stealing about $30 worth of oil from each Osage Indian family a week. Mm -hmm. The guy's already a billionaire. He got the old fashioned way, you know, he, he inherited it, right? right? So we have, there is literally a tape recording. Uh, one of his executives asks Coke, he's wired, mm -hmm. why? I mean, you're kind of, you know, you're kind of already a billionaire. Why are you skimming 100 bucks a week from, you know, this family or uh, the Indian family? You know what Coke's statement was? This is, yep. Coke's statement was, I want what's coming to me, and that's all of it. I mean, these guys are, uh, uh, they, it's he, like a bad James Bond movie. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And by the way, the guy who turned in the Koch brothers on their skimming uh, business when they were skimming off the uh, Native Americans right. was their own brother. He, he right. came in and said at one point, look, they're stealing taxpayer money, they're stealing from these Let's things, see. and they do it on a regular basis, and a lot of the inside scoops, I didn't know you guys had the tape, now you have the tape. See, because I worked with the FBI, mm -hmm. see, with the FBI agents, and we got the tapes and we got the information. And so, yeah, his brother started blowing whistles because he didn't get enough of the, of the, uh, of the jack for himself. Right. You know, yeah, not, not exactly sweethearts. Right, so, and that's not Charles and David Koch, it's another brother that it's they It's another, have. William, yeah. Right. And, um, but the thing is, throughout here, Throughout Vulture's Picnic, it's all these investigations of these one percenters. Right. And it is including the vultures, including, you know, um, you, you know, when you talk about, oh, guys make an investment in, uh, in oil, in uh, Apple or something, and they do okay. Well, for example, I got this guy, the SAC, mm -hmm. Stephen A. Cohn, SAC Capital. Mm -hmm. So, yep. you know, this long blonde shows up one day at one of my readings and says, I have information for you. I, want, I need to meet you. I said, yeah, I, I bet you do. Who are, who are you? 
Patricia Cohn. I said, what does that mean to me? She says, Stephen Cohn's wife. I said, that means something to me. She says, I have documents. You want to you wanna come by documents. tomorrow? Uh -huh. I said, no, I want to come by right now. Uh -huh. And here's the deal. This guy's worth seven billion, mm -hmm. okay? Is he that smart? He seems to know which way a stock's gonna move before God knows which way the stock's gonna move. Mm -hmm. No. According to the stuff that she was giving me, and I'm waiting for the denial, is it's inside information. He knows, he gets, he gets the, it's not research. How does he make, how does he always know? And the, so here's the, here's the trick. It's not, there's no such thing as a victimless billionaire. So when Cohen is selling you, is buying a stock that he knows is like RCA, that he knows is gonna be jump up because of a takeover bid, mm -hmm. you just lost. When he sells a stock that he knows that the bottom's gonna fall out, like Goldman did shorting mortgage securities, right. shorting Greece. That Someone's on the losing end of that. Though. Right, and it's the, the teachers' pension funds, it's uh, the Swiss railroad workers. Uh, I talked to someone who uh, was very high uh, you know, executive at one of these companies, and they said uh, the suckers you always go back to is the pension funds. Yeah. Okay, so all of our pension funds, teachers, cops, et cetera, et cetera, they're the suckers at the table. The guys who run them either A, don't know what they're doing, or B, don't really care. They get the commission either way. Right. So they're like, okay, oh, I'm the losing end of it. Oh, well, Goldman so Sachs was on So the problem is not that these guys make money. The problem is how they make the money, right? Right. That's covered in this book. But before we let you go, Greg, there's sex in here, too. What's that about? Oh, I'm sorry about that, but <laughs> yeah, <a little laughs> it's investigative bit, okay. reporting. In right, fact, God there's bless, one story. Okay. Yeah, I mean, in fact, there's one story where I'm doing an uh, investigation of nuclear, uh, of nuclear plants. Uh -huh. And I got, by the way, I have the engineer's notebooks from Fukushima. The guys that built it. It says, this plant cannot withstand an earthquake. It's right in the book, the actual notebooks, okay? Mm -hmm. But I'm doing this investigation. So the, what, can the, what can these uh, power companies do? Because I've I'm, I'm, uh, got them now. Uh, the answer is, set me up. So I'm, there, I'm on the front page of the British papers because I had my pants down in Miss Jamaica's room. But Miss Jamaica, other, wait a minute, wait so, a minute. Because I used to date a Miss Jamaica. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so, but there's a good journalistic reason why I was there, because she had information I needed uh, I from, bet she did. Yeah, she did. She had a very, couple of things you needed, apparently. Yeah, but, well, you know, I okay. mean, you know. It's, but what's, wait, is there a, like, why, why is that a scandal? So you were having sex? Well, no, they, and then they try to change it where I was like, had snuck into her room, all this stuff. But it was, uh -huh. it was a brilliant setup. And you know, by the way, who did it is a guy whose name is Puss Moron, but I think that he uses the name Piers Morgan here on CNN. Uh. He was the guy who set up for the companies and the prime minister, and then it all blew up in his face. Mm -hmm. And you know, he, you know, Piers cannot go back to England. He's gonna be arrested for, um, you know, so. I, I have no stance on Piers Morgan. <laughs> okay, so look, Greg Palast, the book is called Vultures Picnic in Pursuit of Petroleum, Pigs, Power Pirates, and High fi Finance Carnivores. We didn't even get to the Power Pirates, but you can find <laughs> it in the book. Greg is a BBC reporter, longtime BBC reporter. Thanks for joining us on The Unterst. You're the best, Ching. All right, thank you. We'll be back.